The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 30th, terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a terrific day. Let's make sure we do everything we can to have an extraordinary Tuesday. Of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I, we make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to throw at us. We'll go check out the circumstance of the markets. We'll go look for bulls and bears. And I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here today. Now, I'm here to serve you, so feel free to pick up that phone, dial on it at 877-927-6648. Internationally, you can also call us at 727-445-1044, especially on this terrific Tuesday. This is Tiger Financials Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow up just slightly, up about 18 points, trading at 17,615. S&P is up three points, at tra trading at 2,060. Composites up 17 points, trading at 4,976. Russell, 2,000, up four and a half points, trading at 1,251. The DAX finished down 138 points. The uh, FTSE down 99. Gold is back six bucks right now. Silver's off five pennies. Light sweet crude is up 66 cents, leading the charge here in the market. Dollar-wise is price line. Uh, that's up 31 bucks. Netflix is up 11. Juno Therapeutics up nine bucks. Receptos up nine bucks. Uh, Treehouse Foods up six dollars. So the downside Towers and Watson off four bucks, down three percent. Uh, Intuitive Surgical off three fifty. Skechers down a couple of bucks. So nothing really huge to the uh, downside. Let's start with so with this being the end of the month, I want to take a look at the uh, monthly candles out here get an idea of what's going on so that you and i can take a look at that what the market did here just before we came on the air at about a quarter two let's just take a look at it maybe the low for the day has been put in let's take a look at it and really just looking at the opening range that's the first uh that's the first 30 minutes basically of the trading market now this is we're looking at the futures contract but we're really just uh taking a look at the first 30 well we're taking a look at the entire thing we're taking a look at the blue lines on my screen let me be more clear here the blue lines on my screen are the high and low between 9 a.m and 9 30. and we can see that the lows were broken once those lows were broken price decided to make its way down and test the low between 3.55 and 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Now, that low has been tested and rejected with lighter volume. Again, just looking here at a five-minute chart, just easier to take a look at that opening range here by using and, and I think we could go to some other time frames. We'll see light volume across the board as uh, the ES Mini tested that 2,047 and a quarter level. On five-minute chart, it was 102,000 uh, volume. And with regard to the uh, test uh, that came in here at 12:30, between 12:30 and 12:35, 25. Thousand out here, so um, you know that's done on a quarter of the volume. If I change this to a ten-minute time frame out here, we'll do that real quick. We'll just check on the uh, volume characteristic there. Uh, well, we were going to until it disappeared from my screen. Come on, come on, we're on a live TV show here. 138,000 contracts that was being tested with 42. So a uh, light volume across the board, no matter what type of time frame we're going to use on this. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we take a look, go back to this opening range out here. The real key test of resistance. We can see we have one level here. It's our TAS market profile on a five-minute basis. Prices run right into that. The real key of resistance is going to be 2,055.75. If price gets inside that, uh, you could easily make the ES Mini could easily make run up to 2,067, the top of that uh, daily trading range that is in place right now. So 2,055.75 is a real line of resistance. So that's what's going on on a ultra intraday basis. Let's take a, a cruise around, see what else is happening here in the uh, markets. Let's take a look at the currencies out here because in the currency world, the real headwind for the uh, Dow, for the for the uh, markets uh, today has been that Euro-Japanese yen. Staged a huge rally yesterday. 
I was doing pretty decent earlier this morning, but we can see that that has begun to uh, pull back. Now, what's interesting here about this currency pair, number one, it tracks the U.S. stock market better than any other currency pair out there. It gives us uh, great signals. Now, yesterday we, we saw the market pull back, but we saw this uh, really fight its way back, whereas the market did not. Uh, until this currency uh, pair gets a, a clear signal to continue moving higher, what you can expect is at a minimum a choppy market out there. Now, that's the Euro-Japanese yen currency currency pair. That's different than the euro versus the U.S. dollar. And what's so interesting, we take a look at the uh, we take a look at this currency pair is with all the fires going on or all the problems in Greece and and really just with regard to uh, the euro zone out here. And look, I don't care how it gets done. It doesn't matter whether it's the ECB, other central bankers, whoever it is that's pushing the euro higher. Uh, it has fought. This is uh, the bottom of this uh, rising price channel out here. That's the diagonal yellow lines on my screen out here very key levels of support. Yes, they can be broken in recession. It's really a matter of the body of the candle is the essence of price and where it closes. We can see here, now this chart is delayed by 15 minutes, so I don't think the euro has uh, tanked in the last 15 minutes, but uh, what we can see is when you break inside this, in this case here, slight rising price channel, price tried to break out of it, broke back in yesterday, so really there was no break to the downside. It's just testing that level here as we speak right now, 113 in the afternoon. With regard to the U.S. dollar index, the euro is going to have the biggest impact on the U.S. dollar. you got the U.S. dollar index up about 70 pennies right now, trading out at 95.66 out there. If we take a look at what else is going on currency-wise, you've got the uh, Japanese yen not really doing a whole heck of a lot out here, um, just really trading sideways. So not really giving us, in my opinion, not giving us a ton of information with regard to what its next move might be out there. That's what's going on there. If we take a look at the ETF structure across the board, whether it's the ETFs or the indices out here, what we're going to see is inside days. And inside days, uh, folks, uh, that's not hard to do at this stage of the uh, game because yesterday was such a large down-thrusting candle session. In the case of the queues yesterday, big volume. I spent uh, quite a bit of time with you during the opening uh, of the, I believe it was, well, maybe it was the second uh, session of the, uh, of the hour and uh, going over the uh, volume inside the queues historically, at least uh, certainly taking a look at it from March of 2009, what all that means out there. I will not go ahead and review that again today. You can watch the archive of that on Channel 9, and it's worth doing. Volume yesterday inside the queues, nearly 51 million shares. Uh, to the uh, downside, uh, today's an inside day. What's an inside day typically mean? Typically means the trend that uh, price came from is where price will head to. And I think we'll see that across the uh, board. Now, that could change. Uh, that could change inside day. could change just simply by price moving one tick below yesterday's low of 106.64. We have not seen that yet. The low so far, 106.74. 18 million shares uh, to the upside on this uh, bounce at 1 o'clock. Um, you know, no way for me to really do a um, to do a straight line math calculation of what volume character characteristic looks like. We take a look at the IWM, the Russell 2000. We'll see also an inside day there. It's low, not being tested. Uh, any likely move to the downside inside the IWM, expect that to target the 123.62 level. That's your 0.618 retracement. So that's sticking out there. In the case of the SPY, still trading inside the uh, swing point out here from March 26. Look, we've tested the lows inside the ES mini. So it's rejected that price on later volume. We've given you the level of resistance, the opening range out there. If price gets above that, what you would expect is price to make its way all the way back up to the highs we saw earlier uh, this morning and, and uh, even before the markets had opened out there. Well, what that would give you, just so you know, inside the spies, the key swing point that we're taking a look at is uh, March 26, 153 million shares. You've done 82 million shares. Now, I don't know what the volume characteristic is going to look like at 4 p.m. If it's lighter volume and you get above 206.37, you'll have a rejection of a, a swing point on price and volume volume. It's the spies that are inside that swing point. I believe it's also the diamonds that are inside their swing point out there. Not the case with regard to the Qs. Now, inside of the uh, diamonds, the actual swing point, March 26 again, the low is 175.46. The actual low that we have seen today is 175.45. So what the diamonds have done, the diamonds have tested the swing point low with what looks like lighter volume, 3.3 million shares.
versus six point six. Well, it's going to be a it's going to be a coin toss. We'll see. But if you do get less than six point six million shares, you would have a rejection of a swing point low with lighter volume out there. So that's what the ETF structures look like. Let's go to our first caller, Garo in uh, California. Garo, how are you doing this morning or this afternoon? I should say. <laughs> Thank you very much. How about you, sir? I'm doing uh, very well. Uh, the ticker symbol you want to look at is uh, PSX. That's Philip 66. Uh, tell the yes. uh, listeners what it is that you're uh, looking at out here. Uh, today, Philip 66 uh, crossed that 50 line simple moving average. I would say this is the only uh, oil company that I can see that is above the 200 day moving averages. So anything below 200 day, I won't even touch it. This one, uh, today it crossed at 50 day at 70. Uh, 963 I bought 700 shares and I got out of it in one dollar profit uh, uh, and I sold it and I sold it at 8063 now uh, my question is that do you think that uh, this will reach uh, September of 2014 at the price of 87 and change a hole give me the people. well the first thing that it's doing girl is the, the first swing point that it's tackling is May 4th and that high is 82.19. So that's the first place where I would spend some time. Just again, then I'll go back a little bit further on the left-hand side. Um, but that swing point had 2.8 million shares. And today you've done 2.4 million shares. You've not tested the top. As long as uh, Phillips 66 can uh, close above 80.74, which it has not, you got out, I think, right above that, or maybe you got right out at that uh, level. Um, if it can close above 80.74, uh, it suggests going ahead and testing the top of that swing from May 4th, and that price point is 8219. If it right. doesn't, if it doesn't close above 8074, that doesn't mean it won't test it. What it means is that price will get back and at least test that 8074 level once again. So from a trade setup. For the way that you trade, if this came back to your 50-day simple moving average, that would be your signal to go ahead and, and fire again at it because you're moving into a swing point with volume. Now, you mentioned a date in 2014, I believe. Is that correct? So what was your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your target out here in 2014? The 2014 was the highest, was 80, 87, 89. Yep, okay. So you're looking at the September 3rd uh, swing point. And what I would say to you there is, so the first battle that this is going to deal with is the, is the swing that we were looking at at May 4th. If it can close above that May 4th high at 82.19 and do with more than 2.8 million shares, then what that would do is that would actually give you an A to B equals CD to the upside. That would, uh, that would then increase that uh, chance that you could see... Phillips 66, make it all the way back to that September 3rd high in the uh, 87, almost $88 area for you. That that would be my take, and that would be my take as far as the battles that you need to uh, watch this thing uh, uh, deal with. So 82.19 is a, is a key word, is a key number. 82.19 is a key number for it to cross, yes. Even though yes, I know sir. you don't, even though I know you don't, you don't look at volume. That's a key number. Hey, we're just about to go to a heart break out here, Garo. Thanks so much for calling. Thank you, thank you, you sir. Bet. Thank you. You bet. What break? <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days, and will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, you know, if we take a look at uh, Phillips uh, 66 on the weekly chart out here, um, the uh, the TAS market profile box happens to also be that swing point high. So no big surprise there, that 82.19. So that makes it uh, even that much uh, more important, uh, Garo, if you're still listening for a price to get above 82.19, you do that. You're really clearing resistance. Now, the cool thing is, at this stage of the uh, game, is that that swing point on a weekly basis is the week that began. And May 4th out there and there were 15.5 million shares unless that was a uh, unless that week was a holiday week which we've got this week uh, you're already into a 7.4 million shares we're only a day and a half worth of trading obviously lots of volume inside the market yesterday but what the um, but what the uh, the cool thing is is that uh, you know it just seems like you're taking on that swing point with volume and you're inside the weekly swing. The, the low on the weekly is 78.91. So it really does appear to me that that 82.19 is going to be tagged. And if you get above that, the other cool thing is that the actual swing point high out here from September. Uh, that you're targeting, that, that only has 10 million shares. So actually being able to take that on and test that high would be pretty easy once it clears that 82.19 level. That's on ticker symbol. PSX, folks, that was Phillips 66 out there. Um, so we took a look at the ETFs. We know that uh, key test today, it appears, is going to be inside the diamonds. And then the spies um, being able to break above the top of that uh, swing point. Now, remember, we take a look at the ETF structures. They're going to be different than the 
indices because the ETFs are accounting for dividends and fees and so forth. So, you know, you've got to really shift back and forth out there. But I feel comfortable enough that we covered the way that we covered the SPY and we took a look at the uh, Tesla swing point low inside the uh, futures contract. That we've got a couple tests there from a volume standpoint. So now it's a matter of whether or not the SPY can close above that swing point. If it can't, then you're still inside that swing point, says the low can be tested and if it could be crushed. Uh, you know, as a, a possibility out there. With regard to uh, summation indices, now we'll go take a look at uh, monthly charts. Actually, we'll do this. We'll take a look at some of the shorter term charts. So we get back from the next break in about, well, when we take that in about three minutes, then we'll go uh, take a look at the uh, longer term time frames. New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange completes a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside. Does that yesterday, 0.786 Gartley buy pattern. No bullish reversal signal out here. We can see when we take a look at the price oscillator at 126 in the afternoon it started to turn it has started to turn up it's turning up from the same levels that it did back on uh, june the uh, 9th as it did back on may the uh, 6 out here in fact i can keep going across the board as it did back here on march the uh, 10th and in each case here when it turned up price well price went back to the high with the exception of last one the last one i take that back and that was the uh, did turn up that was off the low on uh, june 9th I ended up making that that 0.786 retracement on june 22nd out there uh, price oscillator still below zero. But right now we're taking a look at is uh, is the uh, depth at which they would uh, turn up. I do not expect it all today to see any of these price oscillators get above uh, zero. If that was going to happen, that would we would we would already be well into that, and that is not the uh, case. Now markets do not typically end at wide ranging bars such as the one that we saw from yesterday. And don't forget, just fill in the gap out there. That makes it a wider ranging bar. And so for a market to pause and move sideways, um, that uh, would be uh, more normal than uh, not out there. Uh, so that's taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange uh, price oscillator. Same thing, really, if we were to take a look at the NASDAQ composite and the uh, Dow out here. So nothing uh, for us to take a look at. I would have to say inside the VIX index, this is the chart here that uh, you want to pay attention to. Now, we take a look at this. It's not really a chart as much as it is the data. Uh, you know, if you're trading, as an example, the UVXY, recognize that you're really trading, in this case here, I, I have to, I'd have to look at the vehicle, but I believe you are trading the uh, July and August contracts out here, the N and Q contracts. Uh, and that's really what is a, is making up the uh, movements inside that it has nothing to do with the actual cash indice out here. Now, what's interesting when you take a look at this, this is just to show you that as soon as this um, as soon as this uh, grease fire gets put out, um, you expect a huge a huge bounce and a big bottom to be put into the marketplace out here. Now, what what does Stevie mean by that? You've got the actual cash fix trading in 1896. Uh, folks, you can take this out all the way into the uh, contract into uh, 2016. We're taking a look at uh, what um, uh, and and basically what you're looking at. Is just take a look at the current months here. July, you're trading at 17.90 in the future versus 18.96. 17.75 in August out here versus 18.96. 17.90 in September out here. Uh, that's not. That's not the way that it works, folks. Uh, and it's just telling you you've got all of that built up, pent up, uh, overplayed movement is really all that's going on out there. The VIX is a, is a terrific tool. 50-day exponential moving average and several other things as well. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's up 40, S&P's up 5. Be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
monetization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile trader's market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Back, uh, folks, as we come back here, that uh, 2055-75 level, that uh, resistance from the opening range uh, under pressure, and looks to me like uh, you're trading 2056 and a quarter. Just above, it looks like the uh, target here becomes 2059.75. That's your one to 1.2728 a B equals CD to the upside out there. If we take a look at six time frames for the S&P futures contract, what we're going to notice, what appears to be the most important level of the uh, day out here, is a uh, Showing up on the uh, two-hour chart on the 120-minute time frame chart, and you can see if we take a look at the uh, market profile out here, you got 2,050.85. So we know really two things: we've seen a test of the swing point low from yesterday. That's been done on light volume. Market profile low has held. This actually says 2,061.65 is likely where well it can't do that, but it can get to 2,061.50 or 0.75 out there, and that looks to be the uh, target. Clearing that, and you'd have to say clearing the uh, uh, level out here from uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. That was about the 2069-ish area. That'll send price up to 2080. 
three. So that's what's going on on the intraday. Now, actually, because I mentioned the two-hour chart for the ES, let's go ahead and at least just take a peek in here and see what kind of, uh, see what we've got. So this is very interesting. Thank you for asking me to do that. So here, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, the top portion of my uh, screen is the ES Mini, the S&P Futures contract. And the bottom portion of my screen is the uh, NQ, the NASDAQ, both on the uh, two-hour basis. Now, in the case of the NQ, let me get my uh, crosshair out here. Uh, that's the bottom portion of my screen. We can see that price had moved lower yesterday. Um, and it moved lower yesterday. And when it was doing that, it was uh, making a, a seventh wave pattern to the downside, as well as what uh, Stevie calls a price relative strength divergent pattern. And he actually did have a hammer candle that uh, showed up uh, on the 120 minute uh, time frame here last evening, albeit a very small hammer. So it's, you know, kind of so-so. But on the 120 minute time frame, just as we looked at on the other uh, e-signal chart, we can see that level of support uh, was holding. We did not see a lower low inside of the NQ. That says seventh wave, you know, is still in place out here. Makes for a relatively easy trade. Well, guess what? And I just noticed this here when I pulled up the under 20 minute chart. That little move lower, I should have should have had that memorized. That little uh, uh, spike lower at about 12:30, got us down to a, a seventh wave pattern with price relative strength divergence inside of the 120 minute chart here for the ES. Those are important patterns to be paying attention to because they often call tops as well as uh, bottoms out here. As I pull this 120 minute chart over to the left hand side, you'll see that the, that's what formed back here um, at the uh, highs back on uh, June. 21st inside the ES mini. It was the high back here on June 24th inside the NQ and that same pattern formed out there. So um, that is what's going on on the 120 minute uh, time frame uh, base. That says that you just have to have to stop. That's one tick below the low of this session, which I believe was 2064.75. So just have to set it at uh, 50. Set it and forget it, as Ron Popeil would uh, say uh, to you. So that's what's going on on the intraday uh, time frame charts. And I think perhaps perhaps the most important chart for us to be paying attention to for the rest of the uh, day. If we go take a look at what's going on from a, a monthly standpoint, get a little bit longer term picture, inside of the market. Uh, hey, here's the XAU. The XAU, this is a monthly chart, by the way. We can see that it also has a, a potential seventh wave uh, session that formed back here in November of last year. XAU has not done a whole heck of a lot out there. Uh, if you break through that, that, that just says things continue to fall apart inside the mining uh, equities out here. That's what's going on in it. But what we want to do first, really, is come back and take a look at the other indices. Let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite first. And when we look at the NASDAQ composite, when we look at this chart out here, um, there has been no bearish reversal signal that has formed. Now, do you have to have a bearish reversal signal in order for the market to turn down? No, but it's really, 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 really helpful out here. And inside the NASDAQ composite, um, and we'll go take a look at uh, some of the other time frame charts. We know that there's huge resistance that it's trying to break through. Uh, there is actually nothing wrong when we take a look at the monthly chart. There's no reversal signal or anything along those uh, lines out here. You know, the issue that the NASDAQ composite is uh, dealing with, if we come back and we take a look at the long term chart out here, well, here it is. Uh, in fact, this is, I'm glad that you asked me to go ahead and bring this up on the uh, screen out here. Last week, we saw it had tried to, for the first couple days, get above that resistance resistance level of 51.47.87 out there. Now, we're not too worried about being right to the tick and the penny out here when we take a look at these lines. But we know that's been a significant area of resistance, just as a significant area of support inside the NASDAQ composite is 49.77.86. You're trading at 49.92. No trend lines, no nothing has been broken here on the uh, longer term charts. And uh, so therefore, it looks like we just simply have a bounce uh, consolidation uh, pattern set up between the 49.77 level and 51, 48 out there, and that's what's going on in it. If we take a look at what's going on inside the New York Stock Exchange out here, we looked at this yesterday. This is the one where we're really keying in on the uh, trend line out here. Now, price has not made its way all the way back to that trend line, but pretty darn close. That is the white diagonal line that you're looking at on my screen. See, when I scrunch it, which is a technical term, you probably didn't know that, but that's a technical charting term that uh, we like to use. 
at least that I like to use out here. When we scrunch it, then it helps us to really identify that uh, trend line. That looks like it, in essence, has been held. Now, that hit. Now that's an important trend line. That's a trend line that comes off of the uh, lows back here in 2011. That lower trend line on my screen out here, that lower white line, that's one off of 2009. When you break one trend where price moves to, it moves down to the next trend level out there. That's how you should use trends out there with regard to when things are breaking. Uh, just like uh, we use here on this screen, we use both uh, diagonal trends as well as horizontal levels of support and resistance out here. 1070, 10,795 is the actual weekly horizontal trading range uh, boundary line. The actual low here so far that we've seen this week has been 10,953. We had A to B equals CD that finished to the downside. We looked at that. When we looked at the summation index and the price oscillators. Now we can see that price inside the New York Stock Exchange up against two really strong levels of uh, support out here, which Stevie uh, expects will hold. Will hold. That says that the New York Stock Exchange makes a run for the 11,189 area. If we take a look at the monthly chart here, let's. Uh, this is the weekly chart. But if we just simply go surfing around for candles or any other uh, price relative strength divergent patterns, just to see what we've got out here in the New York Stock Exchange, it's really a relatively clean chart out here. Um, you know, just nothing more than just really consolidation uh, higher out here when we take a look at uh, this uh, charting pattern so nothing of significance uh, just yet at least inside of it and you know today being the uh, long today being the uh, last day of the uh, trading week it's important to take a look at these monthly chart in fact let's go take a look at the monthly chart here for let's go look at it for the Dow let's look at it for the Dow Jones industrials out here as we take a look at it uh, you can see you do have a bearish engulfing candle. The uh, Dow has had some resistance that has been broken through. It had a little evening star pattern out here. No, it actually never broke. A, did it close above that level? Let me see. I'm, I'm referring to the December high, 18103. Did uh, where did we close that out here? 18. We have 132. We did close above that, but uh, price has since come down. A uh, little bearish engulfing candle out here we take a look at the Dow if I go take a look at its horizontal trading ranges let's do that let's put that up on the screen see if this provides us with some additional information out here INDU in fact what we'll do is go see if there's some harmony in the markets by taking a look at the 120 minute time frame charts and inside the Dow it has pulled back really to its horizontal level of support on a weekly basis it's trading right at about that area 17693 you're trading at 17661 uh, any close below the 17693 with any significance I would expect that trend line that's the white diagonal line on my screen out there that's the one since uh, 2011 I would expect that level to be hit that held during Ebola I don't see any reason why it will not hold during uh, Greece um, you know whether Puerto Rico is really an issue or not uh, I can't say it's overblown the VIX index is the one that's really telling when you take a look at the cash indice versus what's going on next month and the month after the month after if this was really going to have a contagion out there don't you think just don't you think the futures contracts would be higher than the cash indice out here? Yeah, the answer is unequivocally yes out there. So make sure that, you know, you've got to always look at things. Well, I think you don't always have to. I would suggest that you always look at things a little differently out there when you're putting the entire market uh, together. Uh, I did mention the 120 minute time frame charts out here. We were looking at those with regard to the ES and the NQ. Let's go take a look at the uh, at the uh, Dow. Now in the case of the Dow, you got a price relative strength divergent, never made it down to wave number seven out here. Uh, as we speak in this candle session on this 120 minute chart does not uh, end until I believe 2 p.m. out here. Uh, bullish reversal signal though. So that looks pretty, uh, that looks pretty strong out there. Um, and I I would have to say the real key to any breakout is going to be what happens when price gets up to the top of that descending price channel. I think the top of the descending price channel way more important than the uh, bottom out here. In the case of the Dow, uh, that would be out at the uh, 17,757. 120 minute time frame chart, the way these profiles are set up is uh, if it can clear 17,598, it has a bullish formation to it. That point of control closer to the support line that says 17,757 would be the uh, number to uh, determine whether or not it's just simply a uh, bounce or whether it's a, a change in trend. Because if you get above that and above the uh, channel line out there, it increases the chances that it is uh, more 
significant with regard to the move that would be underway. So that covers uh, two-hour charts. That covers some of the longer-term uh, time frame charts out here. Uh, with regard to uh, Goldilocks and uh, silver, uh, again, still not a whole lot shaken out here. If we look at uh, gold's off 750, what's it doing? Trading inside that blue box out here. And that's not the Tiffany-style box. That's the, uh, that's the uh, box with regard to the uh, trading range that this has been caught inside really since uh, February of 2015 out here. So a fairly, excuse me, fairly decent uh, trading range. The bottom of which uh, is down on the uh, down at the swing point of March 17th, somewhere between 11.43 and 11.59 out there. It makes sense that price is headed there. We take a look at our chart here with gold priced in euros, which is the bottom panel, as well as gold priced in uh, dollars out there. It looks like uh, that is the area where price is headed to. And then we'll see if it can find some support and get some kind of decent uh, bounce uh, going on out there. It's important to pay attention to those XAU, HUI uh, charts out there because it would be ideal for those uh, seventh wave patterns to hold and then for uh, these, especially while prices move down into these areas of support inside of uh, gold. Uh, back and take a look. So take a look what's going on inside natural gas out here uh, for Rich in Orlando. If he is uh, listening in, let's go take a look at uh, it, natural gas. Up about a penny out here. Natural gas still. This is the yeah, this is the daily chart. Still continuing to uh, hold this 273 area. We know we saw a number of hammer candles on a 30-minute chart out there. That is going to continue to be the key area. Break below that, and price ought to get to 267 out there. Maybe even go test the uh, lows and or go lower than the June 4th level of 258. Um, silver. There's not a lot really to. I don't think there's a lot to look at in silver, but let's look anyways. Uh, what does the uh, chart in silver tell us? We do have a full moon coming. Is that full moon tomorrow? I've got to look at my July calendar. I believe. I don't want to say whether it may not be. Um, but oftentimes uh, the full moon acts as an initiation move out here. Um, so the question is going to be, will that be an initiation to the upside or downside? Now, I'll say the last two months it hasn't worked. It is unusual for gold, for whatever reason, to not react um, around a, a full moon or shortly, really shortly thereafter. In the case of silver out here, I don't know. I don't see anything bullish about it. Um, it has or uh, is trying to test the uh, lows here from March the 11th out at $15.38. It's gotten down today to a low of 15.43. I suspect that 15.38 at least will be tested. Uh, let's take a look at some equities here before we go out to this uh, last break. Uh, full moon Wednesday at 10:20 p.m. Thank you, Z, inside the uh, den. So. Uh, uh, look for Wednesday, tomorrow, maybe uh, Thursday. If you do see gold moving one way or another, um, be careful because it becomes an initiation. Now you want to find levels of support and resistance out there, but oftentimes, more times than not, uh, that's the uh, pattern that plays out inside of uh, gold. Gold more than uh, silver, silver tags along. To the downside out here, you've got the uh, Towers Watch. And actually, let's take a look at the upside price line. PCLN is the uh, ticker symbol. We were looking at this equity yesterday. Now, price line here came back to, is really two different breakout areas. Came back to uh, breakout area number one, which is from the trading day of February. 13th to the 17th. That was obviously a weekend out there. And uh, price broke out. You had a nice little gap out there. It wasn't really much in the way of volume to speak of. 900,000 shares. It was the next uh, couple days later where we had 2.6 million shares. Hey, price came back yesterday with what? Light volume, 700,000 shares inside of Priceline. So Priceline continues to be caught in a uh, trading range of consolidation between 1108.50 and I would have to say the top of the supply line, the May 7th high, out at about 1227.89. PCLN's a ticker symbol. I mentioned Towers, Watson & Company. That's off $5.78 out here. That's some volume behind the uh, move. Uh, I didn't see the news, but about 3 million shares behind that. Now, this thing had broken out all the way back here at a price level of about 118. It could very easily be headed back into that 118 area. That's ticker symbol TW. Dow's up 63, S&P's up about 10, Composite's up 35. We'll be right back, folks.
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $7. 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to diversify your financial portfolio. Everbank's innovative Market Safe CD can help you diversify while protecting your principal deposit. In fact, Everbank unveiled a new five year Market Safe Power Metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. Metal prices are currently low, so this CD could really deliver. Consider the facts you get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. No annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Intrigued yet? The July 9th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, folks. Uh, Dow's up 82 points right now. S&P's up 12. Composite 41. Russell is up uh, eight points out there. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put this chart back up on the uh, these two, well, a couple charts for you, up on the uh, screen for you. So you've got, uh, it's a little bit cleaner chart, makes it a little bit easier. This is the Dow Diamonds. Uh, so what we know about the Dow Diamonds is we've got a, a test of the uh, March 26 swing point. That's what it's dealing with out here. 6.6 .6 million shares. Uh, so far today, you've done 3.9 million shares. So we've got 
got two more hours of uh, trading out here. Any close above 175.46 with less than 6.6 .6 million shares, you have a rejection of a key swing point with lighter volume out here. <laughs> Geez, any a move above 177.30. And I'm not saying you're going to get that. But if you did, you'd have a complete rejection of that swing point. Um, you know, whether it will be with volume or not, I can't uh, tell you. don't know the answer uh, to that. Uh, you just got to take a look at it. But that's what you should be looking at uh, as you're watching your screen out here. It's just really the bottom that's most important. Uh, you'd like to see it get above 177.30. And you know that, Stevie yesterday the day before and so forth um you know i am in the camp that the markets are going to be forming a bottom a significant bottom it's going to last for longer than uh, it's going to really wear out the uh, bears out there bears are going to be just totally flustered out here and say can we not get a break and the answer is going to be you got to wait for that break to happen and it's not going to be in the month of july I uh, will just give you that uh, forecast warning out there. If we take a look at what's going on inside of the uh, SPY out here, don't you love it, folks? you got folks on uh, both sides of the trade. That's what makes trading. You've got bulls and bears out here. If we take a look at the uh, SPY right now, uh, the SPY testing that uh, March uh, 26 swing point, that's got 153 million shares. You've done 96 million shares. Any close above 206.37 today with uh, lighter volume, less than 153 million shares. You've got a rejection there of a uh, swing point um, I think the uh, biggest head uh, heads up for you is going to be you know something that's not really looked at uh, too often is take a look at the cash industry and take a look what the futures contracts are really communicating to you out here it's saying that something has disjointed something went too far out here and what's gone too far is the market going lower and uh, what we uh, can take a uh, look at is uh, in this chart, I mean, just, you know, there's a lot of folks that invest in the uh, in play the volatility industry and they don't even look at the futures contracts, which is really what is the underlying instrument out there that doesn't really uh, fly. Um, you know, make sure you know what the underlying instrument is to anything that you uh, trade out there. So uh, what else should you be uh, focused on and uh, looking at? Well, I'd, I'd have to say this. I'd have to say you'd, you'd certainly want to check back with me uh, tomorrow and every day and see where the price oscillators are, see where the summation index. Hey, right now, I guarantee you that it's still sellers that are in control of the uh, market with the price oscillators down below the uh, zero. The problem is that they got down to levels yesterday where you have significant uh, oversold bounces or bottoms that form inside of the uh, marketplace. So it may not be yesterday. It may not be today. But it's coming soon to a uh, theater near you, and it's going to be one of those showings that stays for a long time. It's going to be one of those top billings out there where the markets just simply move higher. So look forward to a, a nice, huge, long, extended summertime rally. But that's just one man's view, one against many. Stay tuned because this is Terrific Tuesday. That means our lovable, squeezably soft David White. He's going to be up next after David. We've got the Tom O'Brien show from three to five. And Andy Heck, like Dave Mason, He'll bring it on home to you. So have a great Tuesday, folks, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day. Dow's up 71, S&P's up 11, Composite's up 40 points. Take care, folks. Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com 
under trading newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.